Number two, two contingent, pull. Thank <laughs> you. 
Team Hope.
Bonjour et bienvenue. Je suis le caporal Alex Birubé et je serai votre maître de cérémonie cet après-midi. Good afternoon and welcome. I am Corporal Alex Birubé and I will be your master of ceremony this afternoon. Comme nous sommes sur le point de commencer le service, veuillez éteindre vos téléphones cellulaires. As we're about to begin the service, please turn off your cell phones. Par respect pour la nature solennelle de ces procédures, Veuillez vous abstenir d'enregistrer ou de prendre des photos pendant le service, à moins que vous ne soyez un photographe ou un média désigné. Out of respect of the solemn nature of these proceedings, please refrain from recording or taking pictures during the service unless you're a designated photographer or media. The RCMP would like to respectfully acknowledge that our gathering and work today is happening on the ancestral, traditional, and unceded territories of the Semiamu, Matsuki, Kwantlen, and Katsi First Nations. The service will begin with the marching on of the Gidon. The service debutera par la marche présentant le Gidon. Le Gidon est le drapeau régimentaire consacré de la Gendarmerie royale du Canada. Il porte les décorations d'opérations décernées à la police à cheval du Nord-Ouest, la Gendarmerie royale à cheval du Nord-Ouest et la Gendarmerie royale du Canada pour le service aux côtés de militaires en temps de conflit armé. La coutume veut que le guidon soit porté à l'occasion de funérailles régimentaires et drapé sur un hôtel de tambour. The guidon is the Royal Canadian Mounted Police's consecrated regimental collar. It bears the theater honors award to the Northwest Mounted Police, the Royal Northwest Mounted Police, and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police for service alongside the military in times of armed conflict. It is customary for the guidon to be carried on on the occasion of a regimental funeral and draped on an altar of drums. All persons shall remove their headdress at this time. A reminder, saluting is not required when your headdress is removed. At this time, please stand for the marching on of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Guidon, followed by the procession and Constable O'Brien's family.
everybody. Oh. party slow march
we will begin the ceremony with the singing of our national anthem. I invite Miss Marie Huey to sing our national anthem. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, in all of us command. Cartum bras, port, le paye. Il say porte la croix, ton soir et une épopée de plus brillant exploit. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Please be seated. We are here today to honor our fallen hero, Constable Rick O'Brien of Ridge Meadows Detachment, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and to recognize the ultimate sacrifice he has made in the line of duty to keep our community safe. Merci de vous être joints à nous aujourd'hui. Vos prières et vos actes de gentillesse nous ont touchés et démontrent votre soutien et le respect que vous avez pour nos agents et leurs familles. Merci. Thank you for joining us today. Your prayers and acts of kindness have touched us and demonstrate your support and the respect you have for our members and their families. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Ridge Meadows RCMP Chaplain Greg Dalman for the opening remarks. It is so good that we have all come together for this time and this place to remember and honor Constable Rick O'Brien. This is a challenging moment, but this place is filled with a lot of love and huge support for all who have gathered to lift the hearts of one another. A special welcome to Nicole and your family. I thank you for the opportunity to serve you and the RCMP on this significant day. I wish to express my deepest sympathy to all of you. The RCMP also extends their deepest condolences to you and the family. They appreciate you allowing them to share in the grieving of their fallen colleague, Constable Rick O'Brien. To Nicole and the children, Taylor, Braden, Bryce, Cindy, Chelsea, and Isaac, Rick's father, Rick Sr., and sisters Cindy and Christina, and the rest of the family, it has been an intense and emotional number of days. To the members of the Ridge Meadows Detachment, your worlds have been shaken. Rick had worked his way into your hearts and lives to leave a lasting impression. To the rest of the RCMP present, the other police departments and first responders, thank you so much for honoring Rick and his family today. We know all of you have been touched in various ways. And to our honored guests, 
We thank you for coming and for your presence and support in this very sensitive time. Nicole, what a significant moment. Support and honor by those close to Rick and an amazing, huge RCMP team, too many to begin to name, those who have faithfully stepped up and cared for you in so many ways these past days. From all of us to that RCMP team, thank you so much. This will be a time to remember, but also a time for some hope to help with the healing that we all need. It's my privilege as the chaplain of the Ridge Meadows Detachment to serve you this day and to now bring the invocation, let us pray. Dear God, you know what is upon the hearts and minds of each person here today. In your love, may you fill this place with your spirit and meet each person where they are at. Some are mourning deeply, others just feel numb, others are struggling in other ways. In your grace and power, minister to each person here this day. For those who will participate, give them strength and peace to share what they have prepared. Amen. Rick's family asked that a passage of the Bible that was significant to them and to Rick be read today. It was a passage that Rick's dad and mom would often pray over their children. In fact, a copy of this hangs in their home even today. It is Psalm 91. You'll find it on the back of your program if you would care to follow along. It reads, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Chaplain Dahman. Merci. Constable O'Brien's family has asked for a musical tribute, It Is Well, to be sung by Miss Marie Huey. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Huey. I would now like to invite Constable Ben Stevens and Corporal Pete Westra to provide the eulogy. In September of 2016, at 44 years of age, Rick O'Brien was preparing to graduate depot and start his dream job with the RCMP. One of the Rick reasons Rick wanted to become a police officer was because he wanted to show kids that police officers were there to help and that they could be trusted. His soon-to-be wife, Nicole, who he could not stop telling me about, provided him the final bit of courage required to fulfill that dream. My name is Pete Westra, and I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to be Rick's field trainer, to work alongside him, and to become his friend. When he first started, it was apparent very quickly how kind and compassionate he was. He related with all clients very easily, uh, but he had a special place in his heart for children. As soon as he was allowed, Rick would attend events on his own time to speak with kids while he was in uniform. Every 16 weeks, Rick would don the uniform and visit with multi-barrier young people with the goal of being a positive influence in their lives. Rick loved to attend schools any chance that he got, and he cherished all the positive interactions 
that he had with youth. He kept a picture in his work cubby of a drawing he received from a class of kids. This clearly meant something to Rick. Many people here today knew Rick personally, and many listening to this are here to honor a man they would have been lucky to know. But I wonder how many people here knew that Rick was actually only 13 years old. True story. As a leap year baby, Rick should have had his 13th official birthday this coming February. Maybe this explains why Rick was so happy to embrace his childish side. As Rick gained more experience and became more comfortable at work, he began to treat his coworkers more like his siblings. He could poke and pester with the best of them. When I heard about how Rick would take his sister Christina's donut and lick it before putting it back, I knew we were talking about the same person. But if Rick pestered you, you also knew he would be fiercely loyal to you. Rick was always talking about Nick and the kids of his blended family. He would fondly refer to them as the Brady Bunch. Rick loved all his kids dearly. Cindy, Taylor, Chelsea, Isaac, Braden, and Bryce. He loved you all, and he would tell anybody who would listen. Rick also loved his siblings and parents, and was especially close with his mom. He would often text his mom during shift and ask her to pray for something specific he was dealing with. When Rick's mom passed away this year, it was extremely hard for him. But he would also want me to tell you about his sports. He loved his sports. He loved the Rams, Blue Jays, Red Wings, Vancouver Giants. He couldn't get enough, often using it as a social event, inviting friends out as well. Rick began playing hockey again in recent years, and he was always the first to claim his spot on the Ridge Meadows team for the Cups for Cancer hockey tournament. And he was probably actually the only guy over 40 that was still improving his game. Rick also had a grumpy side, although we like to joke that he wasn't very good at staying grumpy. One of his watch commanders, Scott Grimmer, remembers Rick walking in early for every shift with the largest cup of coffee McDonald's would sell and a tired scowl on his face. Scott would cheerfully welcome Rick back to work and ask, had enough coffee yet? Rick would try to maintain his scowl, but would always end up smiling. Yeah, I have. Rick was so proud to be a police officer. He had such a desire to make a difference, and he succeeded in that. I have numerous memories of Rick standing at my desk chatting uh, when a file would be dispatched with some sort of vulnerable victim involved. He would hardly wait for the dispatcher to be done talking and then say in his best grumpy voice, which I'm sure a lot of you here could probably recognize, oh, fine, I'll take it as if he was trying to portray that he didn't want the file, but we all knew he loved to help those in need. Rick knew when to joke around and when it was time to help. Rick's loss has devastated many people. It was too early and it was senseless. It will be felt by his family, friends, the entire Ridge Meadows Detachment, the RCMP, and the countless lives that he touched. The world has changed with this loss. We can't say enough, but we want to say, well done, Rick. We love you. My name is Ben. Uh, I've known and worked with Rick his seven years at the Ridge Meadows RCMP detachment. We worked together on general duty for the Ridge Meadows RCMP on B-Watch, and we were partners in Pitt Meadows, working in the community response unit together. Rick was supposed to be 51, but you wouldn't know it. He was really just a big kid. 
He could be found on his days off eating Cocoa Puffs and Apple Jacks while watching cartoons. Rick loved to joke around and play pranks. Uh, he really liked to use the PA system on the police cars. <laughs> a way to talk to his colleagues and his clients. I was reminded of this when his sister Cindy was telling us a story about meeting Rick while he was working a shift in Chilliwack. He had gotten Cindy to meet him at the local Tim Hortons restaurant for a coffee. And after that coffee, while Cindy was walking back to her car, Rick flicked on the lights in the police car and he went over to the PA. Hey, you, put your hands in the air, you're under arrest. Cindy tried to ignore him and get into her car as fast as she could. There were a bunch of kids from the local high school out in the parking lot and she was quickly becoming embarrassed. She knew, he knew that she was and thought it was hilarious. He then called her out specifically. Lady in the blue jacket with the black pants and the blue bag walking in the parking lot. You're under arrest. Put your arms up. And you know he would have been laughing in his car. Rick was very young at heart, but he also had a heart of gold. If you ever needed help, you could always count on him. Every time that I've ever asked him to help me move or go and pick up something heavy, he always made himself available. He was genuinely happy to help and spend time with his family and friends. Rick invested so much of his time for others. He constantly volunteered his time to appear at schools, youth centers, local trade shows, sporting events, and anywhere else he, that he could just so that he could show people that police officers were regular people, just like they are. The police officers were kind and compassionate and wanted to spend time with people from every background and experience. Rick knew that the presence of a smile in a uniform had the power to light up the eyes of a child or a person intimidated by the big man with a gun. He always had stickers, temporary tattoos, pins, whatever he could find to give to people. Rick knew that he could make a difference in people's lives and he truly made sure that he did. You can see this with the several posts on social media and letters sent to the detachment where members of the public have expressed their gratitude and shared their positive interactions with Constable O'Brien. And you can see that in the support and the attendance here at this service. One of the common themes with everyone I talked to about Rick is just how proud he was of his family. His wife, Nicole, his three children, Cindy, Chelsea, Isaac, and Nicole's three children, Taylor, Brayden, Bryce. He bragged about you all. Everyone knew how proud he was to be a police officer, an RCMP officer, and everyone said how pr proud they were of the type of police officer that Rick was. He was a recipient of the Award of Valor. His pictures have been on the walls in the Pitt Meadows Community Police Office, as well as the Ridge Meadows RCMP Main Detachment in Maple Ridge. His pictures can also be found proudly displayed in his wife's uh, Nicole's store in Walnut Grove, and can be found on the shrine in his parents' wall. His sisters always asked why their pictures weren't on display on the shrine, and Rick used to tease them with a big smile on his face. I was really proud of the police officer that Rick was. He taught me a lot about patience and trying to be a better police officer, about what is important, and that is to make people feel better than they did. Let people know that they matter, change lives for the better, life is too short. Rick would have been so proud of this service and everybody here. He would have rolled his eyes and said, ugh, whatever. Like he didn't really care about everyone coming out for him. But really he would have been smiling ear to ear. Thank you for giving them this great honor that he truly deserves. In policing, there's a brotherhood, a sisterhood. You go through some really high highs and some really low lows. Through it all, we are stuck together as a family and we help each other carry on. This is what makes Rick our brother and that's what makes us all family. We hurt now because we loved him. We will continue to hurt because we loved him and we will heal because we loved him. And I'd like to finish this with a comment for Rick's uh, niece. Uncle Ricky is a hero and he always was. Thank you, Constable Stevens and Corporal Westra. I would now like to invite Corporal Dan LeClaire 
and Mr. John Brenreth, who will pay tribute to Rick on behalf of friends and colleagues. Hi, thank you all for coming. Rick was my friend and I was so proud to have been his um, men of honor at their wedding. I still have with me the uh, token he's given me the day of their wedding with uh, Nicole. I would like to extend my condolences to Rick's family, to you, Nicole. To his father, Rick, his sisters, Cindy and Christina, and to their children, Cindy, Isaac, Chelsea, Taylor, Braden, and Bryce, and to everybody who knew or worked with him. I would also like to recognize first responses of all past who responded to the call that day. I'm sorry for what has happened to you, and I hope that you can all make a full recovery. I first met Rick over a decade ago. Back then, I already was a member of the RCMP and he is a school teacher. We shared story about various challenges we face at work and how we learned to grow in from them. One day, he and I went to a park and shoot a couple of arrows using my compound bow. He lost one of my arrows and he felt so bad that he bought me a quiver full. They were expensive. I kept bugging him to go and buy himself one, but he couldn't get financial approval from his dear wife, Nicole. So Rick did what any reasonable man would do in such situation, which was to build himself his own little crossbow with his students at school. Needless to say, he didn't have the required power to take down big game, but it sure was pretty cool. His students were lucky to have him and he talked a lot about them. Although Rick loved teaching, he'd been longing to become a police officer and to face new challenges. We went on ride-alongs together in Surrey where he showed focus and asked me mostly intelligent questions. Not long after that, he applied to join the RCMP and went off to Depot. Nicole supported him every step of the way through this trying period. We all know how pleasant Debo can be. Rick understood the risks his passion for his newfound career carried and his actions awarded him a medal. I've always been proud to tell people my friend was a hero. Our society has suffered much at the hands of criminal organizations and the negative impact their influence and presence has on the people around us. Bold statements and money alone are not enough to make this problem go away. And Rick understood that. He didn't require a uniform to take on the responsibility of serving his community. In fact, one evening after getting off shift, he noticed a structure on fire, called it in, and went in to help. Through Rick and Nicole's combined passions, love, and skills, they've effectively contributed to the betterment of their community and public perception of policing. It was Rick's dream to become a member of the RCMP and he wore his uniform with pride. He served his community with excellence because he cared for people. Rick's contribution and sacrifice will be felt far and wide and forever be remembered. They say time heals all wounds and it does, but scars are permanent. Continue to be there for one another, for we don't always know what others are going through. Rick, it has been a privilege and an honor to have been friends with you. I wish I could have done more to help. 
We're also very proud of you. We love you and you will be missed. Thank you. My name is John Brandreth, and I've had the honor of knowing Rick and being his friend for 10 years. Over the past few days, I've been thinking and reflecting about what I wanted to say about Rick. As his friend, what stories could I tell to let people know just a little bit more about who he was? One thing I know for sure is that any stories that were told about Rick, he would have wanted them to, wanted them to be the funny ones as Rick had an incredible sarcastic sense of humor. So the more I thought about it, I realized that if I'd had one, if I'd been able to have one last conversation with Rick, I'm pretty sure he would have wanted me to talk about three things. Firstly, he would have wanted me to talk about what it meant for him to be a member of the, of the RCMP. He definitely would have wanted me to talk about the love he had for his family, his kids, and the love of his, of, and the love of his life, his wife, Nicole. And I'm pretty sure Rick would have wanted me to talk about sports, lots of sports. He loved all kinds of sports. And knowing Rick, he probably would have also wanted me to talk about how great he was at video games on his PlayStation 5. But since I'm not much of a gamer, I'm not gonna talk about that today, Rick. Rick absolutely loved being part of the RCMP. He loved everything about it, including all of its traditions and its history. And I can tell you as a proud Canadian sitting here today, what I'm witnessing is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. Rick worked with some incredible people who I've had the pleasure of meeting recently as well. Rick was also incredibly proud of the people that he helped and influenced over his seven years as an officer. This truly was his dream job, and he loved it. But even greater than the love he had for the RCMP, the love that Rick had for his kids, his family, and of course, his soulmate, and the love of his life, Nicole, was truly remarkable. Anyone who ever had the chance to see Rick and Nicole together as a couple could clearly see how much love they shared for each other. Nicole would absolutely glow and radiate when she spoke about Rick. She is so proud of him. Some of my favorite memories of Rick involve his ability to make Nicole laugh uncontrollably with his jokes and his silly one-liners and his goofy looks. It definitely was a sight to see. I can honestly say, that Rick and Nicole packed a lifetime of love and adventure into their 11 years together. When I first met Rick, I quickly realized he was a huge sports fan. And I think that's one of the reasons why he and I became such good friends. Rick's love of baseball, hockey, and football was massive. And Rick was also a bit of a stats nerd, especially when it came to baseball. If you asked him, he could tell you the batting averages, the slugging percentages, the earned run averages of practically every player on the Toronto Blue Jays roster, both past and present. And Rick was also never shy to call them out and yell at the TV or throw the, or throw the odd remote control in its general direction when they were not playing up to his standards. Rick would also be very happy to know that the Blue Jays are heading to the playoffs again this year. And I plan to drink a few of his favorite Sleeman Honey Browns and raise a toast to him and watching some of the games, and I know he will be there with me. Well, Rick and I shared the same passion for baseball and the Toronto Blue Jays. When it came to hockey, well, that was another story. Rick's love for the Detroit Red Wings was legendary. In fact, I think he owned at least four Red Wings jerseys, complete with matching hats, of course. And before he got his beloved black pickup trick, Rick used to drive around in a bright red car with, with more than one Red Wing sticker on it, too, if I remember correctly. For the past five years or so, Rick and I would attend a Canucks Red Wings game in Vancouver, and it was always a great event. Rick insisted that we went very early when the gates opened 
so that he could get right down to the glass and watch his team warm up. And he would proudly cheer them on, and boy, did he love booing the Canucks. And I think back now in the five years or more of, the, of the, going to those games, I don't think the Canucks won any of them. So you can only imagine the trash talking that went on in the car on the way home after that. And speaking of car rides, I recently heard this story from more than a few of Rick's detachment mates that he used to like to pass gas in the squad car and laugh about it. Well, I can totally relate to this story because in July, my wife, along with Rick and Nicole, were in Seattle to watch the Blue Jays play the Mariners. And we decided to take, a, uh, to take an Uber from the hotel to the stadium. Well, Rick also decided to pass gas in the Uber. And let's just say the Uber driver was not very happy. And the windows were kept down for the rest of the trip after that. It's stories like this and the many others that have been shared about Rick that make him who he is. He was full of life and full of laughter. I feel honored to have known Rick. And I can honestly say there will never be another person quite like my friend, Frederick Thomas O'Brien. Rick, we will forever remember your laugh. We will forever remember your smile. And we will forever remember the impact you had on our lives. I love you, my friend. Rest in peace. And we will take it from here. Godspeed. Here with us today is Cindy Neeson, who will pay tribute to Rick. You are going to hear a constant theme throughout some of our speeches today, so I apologize for that. But for those who don't know who I am, I'm Cindy Neeson. I'm the older of Rick's two sisters. I've been asked to, by the family to share some stories about Rick. Because we're telling Rick's stories, I will do my best to keep it PG. After careful consideration, we thought it would be a good idea to frame these stories by looking at Rick's main love languages, which I have affectionately labeled as, believe it or not, Rick loved you. Our goal is to provide a snapshot of Rick's finer quality. I'm not going to stand up here and say that Rick was a saint because I'm pretty sure lightning would strike. Also, this place is crawling with cops and I'm pretty sure you all have built-in lie detectors. Rick's version of gift giving. Rick enjoyed cracking them off whenever and wherever. Yeah, I'm going there. I swear he would intentionally eat spicy food as well as dairy product to enhance the fragrance of his gift to you. For all of you that can't read between the lines, Rick loved to fart. Both my sister Christina and I were extremely grateful, extremely grateful, when God blessed him with three beautiful children to share this incredible gift with. His oldest daughter, Cindy, yes, you've heard that right, she was named after me. Chelsea, his middle child, and finally Isaac, who is currently telling everyone that he was Rick's favorite. Rick loved to spend time with his kids. Whenever they got into a vehicle to go somewhere, he received an immense amount of pleasure by cracking one off in the truck. He would then proceed to lock the windows and the doors so that no one could escape. If you knew Rick personally, and I asked all of you that had experienced this wonderful pleasure of his gift, I'm sure 90% of you would raise your hands. The other remaining 10% are just trying to be polite or you've blocked it out as a traumatic experience. Rick's version of words of affirmation I know it's going to shock a lot of you, but he was sarcastic. 
Believe it or not, the amount of teasing, joking, and name-calling that you endured, I mean received, from Rick was an indication of how much he truly cared for you. At least that's the way my therapist has explained it to me. Our sister Christina wanted to share a memory. We were all out for dinner when Christina went to ask Rick if he had ever smoked a cigar. Unfortunately, instead of saying the word cigar, Christina said, Skadar. In our family, if you make a mistake like this, we jump on it like a pack of wild animals in search of their prey. So this gave Rick hours of ammunition as well as entertainment. He would say things like, Skadar, mate, and pass me the Skadar. He also took to Facebook asking if any of his followers have ever heard of the word Skadar. Christina is still in counseling. I'm pretty sure she left the dinner table crying too, but that's what we call an O'Brien event. Rick's version of physical touch. Growing up, Rick displayed a great amount of physical touch. These methods were deployed with a well-calculated strategic plan. He would execute them with precision. This consisted of unrelenting wet willies, Mr. Krabs, noogies, rubbing his itchy head on you, Stop hitting yourselves, and my personal favorite, when he would lay on top of you and say, I'm a human blanket. I'm pretty sure this is when we all learned the art of disassociation. <laughs> Rick adored our mom, Pat O'Brien. He had her wrapped around his little finger. I'm not kidding. When he was younger, if he ever got into trouble with our dad, Rick Sr., Rick Jr. would run to our mom, throw his arms around her, and then look over at my dad with a smirk on his face. All kidding aside, Rick loved to give hugs. Some of our favorite memories consisted of his great healing hugs, a gift that he inherited from my mom. Rick would also give you a kiss on the cheek and always say, I love you. Rick's oldest daughter, Cindy, would like for all of you to know that every time she had a school play, Rick was there. He would watch with pride, and then he'd be the first to present her with a bouquet of roses and a big hug. Chelsea, Rick's middle child, wanted to let you all know her best memory with Rick was when he took her and Bryce to the Seahawks game. They had such a great time together. Isaac a.k.a. Rick's favorite, shared the most touching memory of all. Rick had recently come out for a visit, and him and Isaac were driving in Rick's truck, a.k.a. Rick's real favorite child, the truck, that is. While driving, Rick had to sneeze, which took place at the exact same time that Isaac had to yawn. I'm sure half of you have clued in to what takes place next. For the remaining half, Rick... Rick sneezed directly into the blasting vents, which ultimately created a sinus spray directly into Isaac's mouth. I'd just like to say thank you to Isaac for such a moving story. Rick loved to play hockey. My dad was the one who taught him how to lace up and skate. Rick Sr. taught Rick Jr. how to drive a stick and forgave him every time he crashed the car. Every time? FYI, that was a lot. My mom loved Rick. She would constantly remind him of how proud she was. She would kiss him, she would hug him, and she'd pray for him. My parents were so proud of Rick. In fact, when Rick graduated from Depo, yeah, here's an awesome story for you, my parents designated an entire wall for Rick. Some might say a shrine. Thanks, Ben. I don't think anyone knew that Rick had two sisters up until today. <laughs> Rick loved to laugh, and we hope that you were able to laugh with us as we remembered who he is and was. I want to leave you with this. If Rick loved you, he loved you with his entire being. Thank you, Nicole, for loving Rick. Our family is forever grateful to you for loving him his kids, and us, your extended family. We know that Rick is at peace, probably the only guy in heaven listening to Led Zeppelin. I know he is there with my mom, with our mom, 
hugging her and smirking at all of us. Thank you. I would now invite Stephanie Porter to offer a tribute on behalf of Nicole. Hello. As a longtime friend of Nicole, Rick's wife, it is my honor, <laughs> sorry, to be here today to speak on behalf of her and her family and to share with you the words of love that they have written to Rick. I'll begin with Nicole's family's message. Rick will be missed as a son-in-law, brother-in-law, and uncle who was quick to laugh and even quicker to love. Rick had a pure soul, a kind, gentle demeanor, and enjoyed genuine conversation. Rick will be remembered as probably preferring to be seated at the kids' table, eating cereal while watching cartoons or his beloved Detroit Red Wings. And now a message from Taylor. I can't believe you're gone. It feels so wrong to visit the house and not to hear your colorful language as you shouted at the TV during a sports game that wasn't going in your favor, or not to catch a whiff of the delicious meals you used to whip up in the kitchen. Now our family dinners consist of mom's questionable cooking that we used to tease her about. I really miss you. Whenever I needed you, you were always there for me. You helped me through so many tough times, easing the pain of loss and the stress of leaving our family home. I know you despised having to dismantle and reassemble my bed twice, but you did it for me. You were there for me in ways that no one else ever could be, and I'm forever grateful for your love and support through all the ups and downs. I believe you're still watching over me. I love you. Next is a message from Brayden. I will miss the laughs, the endless laughs. Rick never failed to make me laugh, to make us all laugh. With Rick, you could be having the worst day, but within five minutes, he had you smiling. With Rick, you could talk about anything, especially sports. We bonded over sports, especially the Blue Jays. He claimed to love the Blue Jays, but it was more of a love-hate relationship especially when they lost. I'm sure Rick is super stoked that the Blue Jays clinched a playoff spot. My favorite memories with Rick are always with sports. They brought us together. I loved going to the field with him to throw the baseball around and hit some balls. However, my most favorite memories are playing stick and puck on the ice. I'll always cherish those times and miss the fun times we had. I love you, Rick. Now a message from Bryce. It's hard to believe that someone who's been in your whole life won't be there anymore. I miss you super duper much, Rick. And I miss all the laughs and the jokes we've had together. And although I'm pretty sure Ivy the dog was your favorite in the family, in my mind, I know that I was. Seems like there's a competition going on here. <laughs> Thank you for all the amazing dinners. I will always love you. And last, I will read Nicole's words. Dearest Rick, my love, where do I even begin? The night before, we were so excited, talking about this very day, the day where we were jumping on an airplane to paradise for 11 days. 11 days of just being together, no work, 
No distractions, no kids, just us. And here I am instead, sending you off to a different kind of paradise. <laughs> One that I was never prepared for. Excuse me. How do I ever imagine life without you? When our whole life was planned around being together and watching the kids grow up, getting older, becoming grandparents, and looking forward to all the adventures we were still going to take. You were always such a trooper when I came up with things to do. I know you often rolled your eyes and were thinking, seriously, do we have to? But you went along with it anyway because you loved me and you wanted to make me happy. Oh, the fun we've had. We really did fit a lifetime of adventures into the last 11 and a half years. My very favorite thing about you is loving you and the way you love me back. The love we shared will be the one thing I will cherish the most, a once in a lifetime kind of love, a storybook love, a love that we both never knew existed. I love loving you and I love our story. You came into my life when I least expected it. I remember seeing you for the first time. It was those beautiful kind eyes and smile. It didn't take long to learn what an amazing human you were on top of it all. A beautiful human with a soothing voice, kind, caring, compassionate, thoughtful, and considerate. Everything I could have hoped for in a partner and so much more. You wrote me songs and poems, and I even remember when you mailed me a CD you made to my work and then excitedly told me why you chose each song. It didn't take long for me to fall in love with you. I always knew you were my gift from the universe, exactly what me and the kids needed. You not only loved me, you loved my kids as if they were your own. And for that, we are all left more enriched and better for it. You took each one of the kids, Taylor, Brayden, and Bryce, under your wing and nurtured your own relationship with them. Although it wasn't always easy, I always appreciated that you stuck it out. We shared many conversations about it all being worthwhile. Each relationship is different in its own way. And you took the time to build and bond with each one. With Taylor, you were a protective father, making sure she was always safe, having heart-to-heart -heart conversations about boys, guiding her in what she should and shouldn't put up with, and making sure her car was always in running order. You were her biggest supporter in the house when she decided to move out because you knew she was ready to spread her wings and fly. Brayden, you bonded over sports and both of your abilities to smack talk. You instilled a gentleness in him that's similar to yours both of you caring for kids that deserve extra attention. You loved watching him play lacrosse, and even though you weren't always a fan of the sport, you certainly became one of his biggest and made sure you attended as many games as your schedule would allow, even in uniform if you had to. Watching you be engaged in conversation, laughing and being sarcastic, trying to outdo one another, will forever be etched in my heart. And Bryce was only two when we met, and I don't remember a time when you weren't in his life. We were lucky to have a few trips that were just the three of us. Bryce has always been a kid of a few words, but boy, did he not stop talking when you were around. I loved watching you play and be goofy together during our Disneyland trip and our recent trip to the Maritimes last summer. Seeing how much laughter and joking went on between the two of you, how much the two of you loved to gang up on me when you were together, made our trips ones that I know he will never forget. I know this summer you talked about how proud you were of the box lacrosse player Bryce was becoming. Starting off as a gentle kid who didn't like to hit anyone, I remember how excited you were when he laid out a few kids in that final Samyamu game, even making a trip over to the penalty box to see him. While going through this process, I had to spend a lot of time choosing photos that I could share with everyone so they could see and get to know the amazing man you are. I know how frustrated you got with me whenever I pulled out my phone 
asking you to take another selfie. You would constantly bug me about the 20,000 photos on my phone and the many folders I have on my computer. But now I have thousands of photos of you in them, and I'm so grateful to have captured so many of our special and fun moments. To me, every photo is a gift. I will look at them often and remember our life as one of love, laughter, and adventure, a life that we built together and we're proud of, a life with our six kids that had so much more to fit into it. I promise that I will be strong. I promise to continue to be there for all of our kids, loving them and supporting them the way we intended. I promise to become a better cook, so perhaps one day the kids will like your cooking or my cooking nearly as much as they liked yours. I promise to continue to watch baseball and yell at the TV when the Blue Jays are losing. I promise to still attend hockey games, but I can't promise I will ever cheer for Detroit. I promise to make sure I get the grandkids that secret phone you wanted to get them so you could talk to them anytime. And when they call me, I'll be sure to tell them stories about you. Thank you for loving me and showing me what true love was meant to be. Thank you for loving our kids endlessly. Thank you for your patience. I know you stood by me during some really hard years. Thank you for being a positive role model in our kids' lives and for those within our communities. Thank you for showing strength, vulnerability, and demonstrating to our kids that no matter how old you are, it is never too late to go after your dreams. I will remember every kiss. I will remember every touch. And until we meet again, I will love you. And I will miss you. And I will honor you every day. You are my forever love. And I will forever have your six. I love you so much, Nick. Thank you all for your kind words and a fitting tribute to Rick. Thank you.
J'aimerais maintenant inviter le commissaire Mike Duham, commissaire de la GRC, à dire quelques mots. I would now like to invite Commissioner Mike Duham, Commissioner of the RCMP, to say a few words. Sir. Constable O'Brien's family, Right Honorable Dominique LeBlanc, Minister of Public Safety, Premier of British Columbia, Mr. Eddy, honored guests, RCMP colleagues, law enforcement and first responders, veterans and friends. I want to start by expressing my deepest condolences. That's far too formal of a way to express how raw this feels. Once again, a senseless act of violence has robbed us of someone who is making a difference, who is trying to make things better for all of us. I'm devastated by this tragic loss and outraged that one more police officer was killed in the line of duty. Il y a peu de mots pour exprimer la haine que je ressens. Une fois de plus, Un acte de violence insensé nous prive d'une personne qui faisait une différence au sein de sa communauté. Je suis attristé par la perte tragique et indignée qu'une fois de plus un policier ait tué en exécutant ses fonctions. The RCMP is one big family. The roots begin to depot. From there, we grow together, we celebrate together. We support one another and we grieve together. Please know that the entire family shares your grief, as does the national and international law enforcement and first responder community. We are here with you during these incredibly difficult times. Constable Rick O'Brien's death is enormous loss to his family and loved ones, to the larger RCMP family. British Columbia, as well as across the country, as well as the communities he served. Last week, the British Columbia Law Enforcement Memorial honored fallen members in this province. Just before that, I was at Depot, our training academy in Regina, for the RCMP National Memorial. Sadly enough, we added the names of three more fallen police officers to the honor roll, Constables Yang, Dramil, and Dami. When I left that memorial, I hoped to never have to add another name to that monument. Regimental funerals like memorials are deeply meaningful ceremonies for any first responder, especially law enforcement. They bring key partners together and remind us how many people are affected by the work we do. They allow us to pay our respects to colleagues we have lost and continue to grieve but they also serve as a stark reminder of the risk police officers face every single day, simply by doing their jobs, without knowing what the next call will bring. We are the ones that individuals and communities rely on for help in their darkest moments. Constable Bryan gave so much of himself in his seven year ex exemplary service with the RCMP. He received the commanding officer's commendation as well as recognition of valor from the province of British Columbia for helping to disrupt a violent home invasion. His work contributed to the rescue of four adults and one small child and the arrest of four armed suspects. The sad reality is the criminal landscape is increasingly violent. The demands placed on officers are higher than ever and the dangers are painfully real. This means that our law enforcement community is needed now more than ever. And I am forever grateful for the sacrifices made by our members, law enforcement, and our first responder partners. It takes a special kind of person to choose to work in this field. Policing demands extraordinary dedication and skill, outstanding professionalism, and unflinching courage. There are certainly easier ways to serve Canadians, many with fewer risks. 
But quite frankly, I can't think of a career more rewarding than this one. Like every member of the RCMP, Constable O'Brien chose this noble path of service in order to positively contribute to enhancing the safety and security of Canadians. Rick made a positive impact in policing and everything he did. He embraced his community and provided a model for others to follow. Rick is, and always will be, a hero. And we will carry on his important work. As Commissioner of the RCMP, leading this great organization made up of 30,000 people, I will keep doing everything in my power to protect the safety of every RCMP employee while they focus on protecting others. And I call on community leaders and decision makers at all levels of government to do their part. Each one of us must support the vital work on the way to preserve peace and safety across this great country. And I'm counting on all of you. En tant que commissaire de la GRC, responsable de cette merveilleuse organisation composée de plus de 30 000 employés, je ferai tout à mon pouvoir afin de protéger chaque employé qui au quotidien se dédie et se consacre à protéger les autres. Je fais également appel à tous les dirigeants communautés ainsi que les élus de tous les niveaux gouvernementaux de faire leur part. Chacun de nous doit appuyer le travail vital d'assurer la sécurité des citoyens à l'échelle nationale. Je compte sur vous. On behalf of the RCMP and all the people that he served, protected, and inspired over his career, I want to express my most heartfelt thanks and respect to Constable Rick O'Brien. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Merci. I would now like to invite Deputy Commissioner Dwayne McDonald, Commanding Officer of E Divisions, to offer remarks. Sir. On behalf of all the men and women who work with and support the RCMP here in British Columbia, many of whom are here today, I extend our most profound condolences to Rick's family, his friends and his colleagues. We are here to honor our hero and to comfort Rick's family, his detachment, the force, communities, partners and a country who are all in mourning. We're here to process our pain, and to cope with our frustration and our anger. And we're here to celebrate the life and an ab of an absolutely remarkable man and a Mountie, someone who consistently closed gaps and stepped up when he was needed most, Constable Rick O'Brien. Rick's path to the RCMP began when his family moved to Chilliwack. He was 17 years old. And after completing school, he went and worked as an education assistant for eight years in Chilliwack Social, uh, School District and also as a support worker for the Surrey Association. Rick's passion for helping others made him an ideal candidate for the RCMP. And after several years, Rick made the momentous decision to change careers and join the force. He saw a need, a gap, and he knew he could fill it. Cadet O'Brien started his training in depot on April the 4th, 2016, as a member of Troop One. And even though he was a mature cadet, he was a little quiet and reserved when he first started, but he was very focused on learning and improving. He was part of the Depo Choir, and despite his best efforts, I'm told he wasn't able to get Led Zeppelin added to the song list. But Cadet O'Brien put in work, he spent extra time with his trainers, he overcame all his challenges, he gained his voice and his confidence, 
and he earned his red surge and his badge. He was excited to return to BC after his training. He asked to be posted in Lower Mainland so that he could be with his family. He also hoped to continue to build on the many connections he had made prior to joining the force. In his own words, in the memo that we as Mounties have to send to our first posting before we leave depot, Rick wrote, and I quote, I know my determination, drive, and my interpersonal skills, as well as my desire to help people, would be an asset to general duty and for future specialties. I am eager and thrilled to begin as a constable and look forward to my first posting in E Division. Once he arrived at Ridge Meadows Detachment, he settled in well, working in the front line for a few years before joining the community policing unit and then crime prevention in Pitt Meadows and then back again to general duty in the front line policing in Maple Ridge. He was quick to close the gaps, whether it was bridging divides in the community, forging connections with fellow officers and partners, or extending a helping hand to those in need. He had an uncanny knack for bringing people together, for finding the most common ground, even in the most challenging of circumstances. Whether it was spending extra time helping the homeless, participating in events for residential school survivors, or when doing many presentations about graduated licensing or bullying in schools. Rick loved shirt day. Whether it was a pink shirt, an orange shirt, a hockey jersey, sports jersey, or just required someone to show up in red surge, he was your guy. And during COVID, when we were all uh, required to socially isolate and distance, the world became smaller. And in response, Rick increased his patrols in the Katsi community, wanting to assure them of his protective presence. He'd stop and wave at kids along the way, always bringing a smile to their face. He found a way to close the gap. He did a number of online presentations to ensure that our most vulnerable youth were supported. And Rick stepped up when faced with adversity. As we've heard, with just eight months service, Constable O'Brien displayed calm leadership and courage when he and other members of Maple Ridge responded to multiple 911 calls of an actant and violent home invasion by armed suspects. Despite the inherent danger of confronting armed suspects, a small team of members quickly formulated a plan and made entry to the residence. They rescued four adults and a child, and they apprehended the suspects. He closed the gap on that day, just as he did last Friday when executing a search warrant in Coquitlam. It says something when multiply, or multiple assessments reference Rick's sense of humor, his appetite for mischievous behavior on the watch, but also his realistic optimism and his ability to wordsmith his recurrent reports in such a way that still have his supervisors laughing. Saying goodbye to one of our most noble protectors will never get easy. He spent so much of his career closing gaps. How do we now deal with the gap left by his absence? When we look at Rick's life, a phenomenal one sacrificed in service, we see an unwavering dedication to community. We see a man who made a conscious decision to change careers in order to put the lives of others above his own. We see a person who cared deeply for others, especially the most vulnerable, because it was at the core of who he was. Constable Rick O'Brien, Regimental Number 62890, you chose to serve and help others, and you did so with distinction. You were and are a hero who consistently closed the gap and stepped up when we needed you the most. You made a difference. And to Rick's family, thank you for sharing Rick with us. We share in your grief. Your RCMP family is here for you always. And we know that nothing we can say or do will ever ease the pain that you're feeling. But we do know that we will never stop being by your side, wherever and however you need us. It's what makes our RCMP family special. It's made up of so many incredible people like Rick. We stand ready, a sea of red, to fill the gap that the Rick has left behind. We are so fortunate to have had Rick among our ranks. He made us better. Let us honor his memory by carrying forward the values of courage, of compassion and unity that defined his service. And it will take courage moving forward, but we can take some of that courage from Rick because he certainly had enough to go around. 
we will never forget. Thank you, E Division, Pipes and Drums Band, for the playing of Amazing Grace. I will now ask Ridge Meadow RCMP Chaplain Greg Dalman to come forward to provide the homily and offer the prayer for the RCMP. We've had a great number of tributes recognizing the quality of Rick and enjoyed some great photos of Rick's world and we're him doing life with his family and friends. Thank you for sharing them with us today. 
Some of those things we or I would never have imagined, but then again, if you knew Rick, it does make sense. My experience with Rick started seven years ago when he started at Ridge Meadows. He was like many other rookies, facing all the forms and paperwork to do, be processed. I would see him just occasionally times when I would visit the detachment and be there. In time, it was great to see him engaging and resourcing other new members who had come after him. Seemed always to have time to help those in need, and he worked alongside with a gracious spirit. And for those of you who worked alongside him, becoming friends, and there are many of you, we are grateful for all that you added to his experience of being a police officer. It was a pleasure to ride with him a number of times. I saw him act with integrity, being straight up with people. When he responded to calls, he did it with respect, even though those in his face did not deserve it at times. When people were hurting, his compassion was evident. He had a big heart in sensitive situations and people mattered to him. When files showed up, he would step up and arriving on the scene, there was just a strength in him to take responsibility and sort things out. Overall, Rick served with excellence. He reflected the very core values of the RCMP as he did his policing. As a chaplain, we also would have some great and at times very serious discussions. Yes, and with Led Zeppelin and other heavy metal in the background. We had fun talking and discussing a variety of things, especially the last three to six months I would say our time together led me to believe I would call him my friend, and I too was totally shocked on the day when I received the news of his passing. I too will miss him. Nicole, I heard of his love for you and his desire to continue to build his relationship with you going forward. And for all six of the children, he wanted to be there for you and always was desiring your best going forward. We also like to talk about Hoggy. Any surprise about that? And shocking for you Canuck fans, yes, he liked Detroit. When he found out, recently actually only, that my son-in-law was in the NHL, he said it would only matter be excited if he played for Detroit. Well, about 10 days later, I texted him that my son just signed with Detroit for this year. He was excited for me. We now could look forward to the season and had planned for time to time to review the games and the team's progress. I guess I will now watch the games and remember him each time I do. As many of you know, the passing of Rick's mother, Pat, unsettled Rick. We talked about her and the val valuable part she played in his life and how he missed her deeply. Interesting, Pat's celebration of life was September 22nd, 2022, one year to the day before Rick's passing. I believe the upbringing that his parents, his faith and life journey experiences which we've heard from the family today, prepared him for his career within the RCMP. What was built into his life in compassion and diligence made him the person that those on his watches knew. Today is a time to remember Rick, but it's also time to mourn as we miss him. Ridge Meadows members, this is a time of great loss, sorrow, and even anger. Each of you is in a different place this day. We hope you find hope and healing for our hearts and minds, but how? So how can we go forward? To do that, we need truth and understanding. It is said that the truth sets us free. From all of us, we are faced with times in our lives when death intrudes and separates us from those we loved like today. How do we deal with the loss and sorrow? It can be overwhelming. Our minds are flooded with many questions the many what-ifs that play through our minds, or the elusive why questions. For most of these questions, there are probably little to no answers. I would like to share and, and, and some of the truths of Rick's life that may answer one of the biggest questions facing us today. Let me start with a short story from the Bible. It's of a son who enjoyed home life with his father, but one day he decided to strike out on his own. He wanted to do life his way and sort of saddened his father. Life started good, but in time, it did not turn out as he anticipated. The son realized life with his father was better than where he was at. But how could he go home? Finally, after further reflection and challenges which had increased in his life in various ways, 
he eventually turned towards home. It would be a big step to return home, but something was drawing him. As he approached home, his father, who had never given up looking for him, saw him coming at a distance. Filled with compassion and the intuition knowing where his son was at, he ran to him, threw his arms around him to welcome him home. As Rick and I talked, it was interesting to learn that he grew up in a home where his father was a pastor. In his teen years, he actually accepted Jesus Christ as his savior and shortly after that, with his sisters, was baptized in the church. In those early years, Rick actually sang and played guitar and bass in the church to help lead the Sunday worship. Over the years, though, Rick's faith sort of went up and down. The Rick that I met, and maybe many of you knew for the detachment, had a life that did not reflect the faith of his past. Today, you may be shocked as when I was when he told me some of these details. Here is an amazing turn in his life story, and timing can be everything. Friday, September 22nd, is well noted for what took place. But on the previous Sunday, Rick found his way into a church. After the service, he talked with the pastor, who, of whom I was able to confirm what I'm sharing with you today. The pastor said that Rick enjoyed the music because it was some of the same songs that he'd led in his church years back. He went on to tell the pastor that he was feeling a need to move back towards church and the faith he once had. From all that the pastor shared with me, we agreed that on that Friday, September 22nd, Rick's Heavenly Father embraced him and welcomed him home. God knows our hearts before any changes in life can ever happen and have the chance to take place. This answers probably one of the great questions of these days, a question that some from the detachment have been asking me. Did Rick have any aspect of faith, or where is Rick now? I believe from Rick's faith and what it teaches in the moments of passing, he went immediately to heaven, a beautiful place, and into the very presence of God. God today does not want us to worry. God said, do not let your hearts be troubled, but believe in me. The moment Rick passed, Jesus was right there to accompany him to heaven, which was in an instant. No long tunnel with a bright light and no debate at the gate. He was in. Heaven is an eternal place, void of sorrow, pain, sickness, and death. Also, he has been reunited with his mother, and I'm sure they've had lots to talk about. Today, Rick is just fine. In fact, he is more than fine. He did not choose to leave us. Some today may ask, where was God's protection that we read about at the beginning of this service? Something was at work bigger than we may see or understand. Yes, bad things can happen to good people, even followers of God. We know that if God allows things like this, it touches his heart and is always for a much greater purpose. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his followers. It is still hard for those of us left behind. We will mourn, but we can do so with hope. Another question from the day is, why? Why was it Rick? Maybe, maybe because he was the one who was ready, ready to leave this world. Chaplains and psychologists and counselors can provide counsel and assistance after many crises in our lives. But for death, each of us must prepare ahead of time. And today, Rick serves all of us as his passing helps us to face this reality one that we don't often like to consider, as in Rick's case, it can come when we don't expect it. For everything, there is a season and a time, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time for love and a time for peace, a time to be born and a time to die a time to embrace, and a time to heal. We need to be ready, and ready also with answers which support and encourage family and friends in troublesome times like these. Rick's life and faith in Jesus Christ gives us answers that give all of us hope at a time like this, and may we be encouraged by the words as we remember Rick in the days to come. To conclude, I would like to read a short passage 
with you that has been used for generations to bring comfort at times like today, and it is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us now pray for the RCMP. I come to you, God, with a request for your compassionate grace for each person here. Embrace this amazing crowd of RCMP members, along with all the other police and first responders. They need to feel your love and presence to be able to heal and go forward. Lift up those who are deeply hurting. This group is a valuable force that all of our communities need to stand against evil that in our time seems to be increasing. Stand with them as they endeavor to uphold justice. Give each person peace of heart and mind and the strength to stand. For those who may be struggling the most, I think specifically of the Ridge Meadows Detachment, the evil of that Friday has hurt them enough. We do not want them to continue to hold them down. Help them to find release from all their emotions, including anger and guilt, and replace it with anticipation of what tomorrow can bring. Still the storms that are raging in their hearts and minds, and restore them to optimism, hope, and confidence that they may once again step up and be the skilled members they are, have been, and can still be. Give them wisdom, bless their work with victory, give them safety and take care of their families. We lift up their families, their spouses or significant others who may be struggling with anxiety. Remove their fears with a sense that life will be okay. Their children need to find calm once again, trusting their parent will be okay as they return to policing. For everyone, may you restore to us our joy. This I pray, and may God make it so. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Nous amorçons maintenant une cérémonie qui est pratiquée par les organisations militaires et paramilitaires. La GRC, en tant que régiment, observe ces traditions. Dans un instant, vous serez invité à vous lever alors que le clairon, le sergent d'état-major à la retraite, Dave Herman, jouera la dernière sonnerie. La dernière sonnerie est la sonnerie militaire traditionnelle qui marque la fin de la journée. Les sentinelles sont à leur poste, le camp est sûr, Votre devoir est fait, et reposez en paix. We are now entering into a ceremony that is practiced by military and paramilitary organizations. The RCMP as a regiment respects these traditions. In a moment, you'll be asked to stand as a bugler, the bugler, retired Staff Sergeant Dave Herman, plays the last post. Last post is a traditional military call that signals the end of the day. The sentries have been posted. The camp is secure. Your duty is done. And rest in peace. Le cornemuseur major Hugh Pedden, le cornemuseur et tambour de la division, a juré l'élégie. Cet hymne sert à exprimer symboliquement le chagrin du fait d'être séparé de son être cher. Pipe major Hugh Pedden of the E Division Pipes and Drums will play the lament. The lament is to symbolically demonstrate the sorrow of separation from our loved ones. Pour clore la cérémonie, nous entendrons le réveil, que jouera le clairon encore une fois. Le réveil est la sonnerie du matin qui annonce un nouveau jour. Un nouveau jour pour ceux et celles qui restent afin de poursuivre leurs œuvres. Pour Rick, c'est un nouveau jour pour son ascension 
au-dessus des réalités terrestres. The final portion of the ceremony is Reveille, again played by the bugler. Reveille is the morning call that signifies a new day. A new day for those that are left behind to carry on as they must do. For Rick, a new day to rise above his mortal duties. Please stand, and those in uniform are asked to stand at attention.
seated. Hold.
Lower. Lower. I would like to invite Chaplain Dalman to offer the benediction. Our time together has honored Constable Rick O'Brien and I believe ministered to his family. It has been good to rally around so many great memories of Rick. In a few moments after the concluding of the remaining aspects, Rick's body will be moved from this place. This is the shell that has served him for 51 years, but now it concludes its purpose. This will return to where it came from. This is the form which we have identified closely with, his stature, his presence, his smile. But be assured of this fact, Rick, the person that we all love and appreciate, is not here but is very much alive. It is good that we mourn, for we have been separated from him, and we will miss him. But the kind of person he was, which I've heard over the past many days, he would want us all to continue to care for one another, and then to step up and move forward. Life is still very much in front of each of us. Let us now pray for the family. And now, God, as we conclude our time together, remembering and honoring Rick, his life and his service, we thank you for being present and your care for our souls this day. We bring to you Nicole, the six children, Rick Sr., Cindy, and Christina, and the rest of Rick's family and friends. They too will need to feel your love in powerful ways for the days that are still ahead. May you give them hope because of Rick's faith in you. Heal their broken hearts, bring peace to their souls, and restore their joy. And now may the grace of God be with you all. May he bless you with strength for today and for all of your tomorrows. Amen. We will miss you, Rick, but by faith we will see you again. Thank you, Chaplain Dahlman. Merci. Please stand.
for the marching off of the Guidon. Please remain standing for the departure of the Barrett party and Constable O'Brien's family.
Prayer Party. Health. Holders, prepare for right. Dress. 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 Prayer Party. Slow. March. This ends the official service. Once the honor troop has exited, all those in uniform are then invited to exit the venue for the final salute as the coach departs. Those on the main floor will exit out the rear right gate and line up. Persons not in uniform wishing to observe may exit and observe from behind the uniformed lines. All persons, please follow direction from of the ushers inside the building and parade NCOs outside. Please line on both sides of the road leaving the venue. After the final salute, all are invited to return to the main floor surface of this arena for refreshments. Those requiring a ferry back to the island, shuttles uh, will depart after the salute. All other buses will be ready to be departing just before 5 p.m. and continue running as needed. Thank you, take care.
Thank you. 